Hey everybody, welcome to Build Fly Go. I just got done with the in-cabin uh, brake and fuel hoses, um, and I figured that let's do just a quick overview of what it looks like and uh, any little tips or challenges or things like that. So let's do fuel hoses first. Starting from the front, you'll see this big hose over there is actually going through that big hole. It's gonna go through a fitting that's on the bottom smaller hole there. Uh, I don't, uh, <laughs> I guess I have a personal rule of no aluminum fuel fittings firewall forward and um, the kit, the Vans kit comes with an aluminum fitting for that. Uh, steel fittings have a much higher melting point. It's just a small extra safety factor. It costs, I think the fitting costs like 20, 25 bucks or something like that. It, Personal choice, uh, you can definitely do the aluminum fitting, no big deal, uh, but uh, I am waiting for my order of the steel fitting. Then we come to the fuel pump. This is the uh, Airflow Performance uh, fuel pump, and you'll notice that there is no filter here, and that's because I went with the wing root filters that AS uh, Aircraft Specialty uh, uses. So there's just a missing fuel filter there. So this goes straight to the valve, this is just a regular and air, um, I think it's the FS20X7 valve or something like that, uh, bought from uh, Vans Aircraft. So Vans actually has the cheapest price on this valve. Uh, aircraft spruce, uh, as, as of today, was almost $100 more for the valve. It's about a $250 valve. I think it makes a much, much nicer finished product than the brass valve that ships with the kit. Um, I put the same valve in the RV9, it's great. So highly recommended. And then you'll see that the fuel lines all connect to there and then break out and into the sort of, these are shipped with the kit, just the regular 90 degree fitting here that goes in the normal spots to the outside. You can see my dirty shoes there. And uh, you'll notice that this in the van's kit they just have a hose come all the way through with a rubber grommet and plug into the tank. Because I'm doing the wing root filters, you actually need a 90 here. Um, and I use these funny little bushings. These look like they're just little uh, uh, aluminum donuts. They're actually machined aluminum donuts so that they like capture the hole, the size of the hole in the skin. Um, they're pretty pricey. I wanna say they were 40 bucks for a pair for both sides. So. Pretty expensive, but it's a it's a nice finish, and you know, unfortunately, it's one of those is what it is kind of situations. Uh, TCW is probably pretty happy that it is what it is. <laughs> You'll notice that I'm using the braided stainless um, Teflon braided stainless hoses from AS Flight Lines. This has saved so much time. Oh my gosh! And they're just perfectly sized. They just fit right, like it just works. And you'll notice a lot of people will modify these little brackets um, to make the holes bigger and etc. and some other stuff. I found that rubber grommets fit perfectly. Like these are just regular rubber grommet sizes. Nothing special about them. They're a nice tight, you know, snug fit on the hose and snug on the bracket. And I didn't have to modify anything. It just fits. So that works really, really well. On to brakes. Um, okay, so let's start in the back, uh, in the bottom, I guess. So here is the brake fitting. I really should cap that on the bottom of the airplane. And you'll notice that it comes up there. Again, the AS Flight Lines climbs into a 90 degree bulkhead fitting. And then it follows the side of the tunnel forwards. Um, you'll notice that the Adele clamps, some of them are facing up, some of them are facing down. And I did that to keep the hose from actually rubbing on things. If you set it just right, the two forward ones are facing up and the rear one is facing down. That makes it so that the hose gets just sort of the right shape to avoid the rivets and the floor in the tunnel. And it fits pretty well. Then right there, it's two Adele clamps into a nut plate. Uh, I believe that's a, just a stock Vans nut plate there. Um, I think that's even what that's for. <laughs> and then it comes up through the inside, through the regular holes um, that are already in this bracket. Notice that I put caterpillars, I call these caterpillars, they're edge guard, right? They're mil spec edge guard um, on both of these holes. Um, and I always put like on the, where they meet, I put a like a dollop of E6000 glue just to 
keep it, keep that there. It's unlikely that it's ever going to move, but it's just a, an extra little safety thing. Um, you'll notice that no torque seal on these yet, um, and that tells me that these are not tight. So every time I torque a nut, uh, uh, either a B nut or a shear nut or like a bulkhead nut or anything like that, I will always put torque seal on it so that I know that I'm done. Um, huge best practice, you know, please don't skip out on torque seal on your airplane. Uh, it's, it's a huge safety thing and you can at a glance tell if it's moved. Anyway, so <laughs> from there to the uh, parking brake. And the parking brake comes with this little nice little bracket. Oops, comes with this nice little bracket down here. And this is the AS Flightlines um, parking brake back bracket. There's gonna be, I think it's a Belden clamp here and you'll notice these are loose, no torque seal. Um, and this is going to move the parking brake on and off. These are loose because of that, because I don't know yet how far this has to go. If it has to go all the way, I might actually have to get a new hose for hit for this and uh, rotate this upwards, right? You see there's a little bend there. It's on purpose to sort of unkink the, the hose or don't create a kink. Anyway, <laughs> you'll notice that these hose, or you may be able to see this, that the hoses are rubber coated. Um, there's this nice little soft feel coating on them. And that's the case for the brake hoses, but not for the fuel hoses. The fuel hoses are much bigger, so they don't get that. Um, and what, one of the benefits of this uh, is I don't need to protect the, uh, the weldments here for the, for the pedals because if it was just a stainless hose, I would want to put something underneath to protect it so it wouldn't rub. Um, but because it's rubber uh, or plastic or whatever it is, uh, soft feel, <laughs> um, rubbing on this, I'm not worried about it wearing. Um, so that's, that's pretty nice. Um, I will, of course, tighten this up a little bit with some zip ties once it's all in place. Um, but again, these are not tight yet. I'm waiting for the brake pedals. The brake pedals are at the powder coat guy. <laughs> and uh, I'm guessing it'll be another week before I see them. But uh, yep, and then from here, we just go to the other side. And from the other side, you see they go up and through the firewall to the brake fluid reservoir. So pretty simple, nothing complicated. Um, these hoses are really nice. Um, I'm not getting paid to say that. <laughs> I use them in the RV9 and uh, you know I was happy to spend the money on them this time. One thing you'll notice here that's not stock is I used a big bolt here. I believe this is a 57, an AN 3-57, I believe. Um, for the pedals because the stock setup there's a bolt here and a bolt here and they can't be tightened right so they are um what's i'm gonna call it uh with castle nuts and a cotter pin you can see the cotter pin over there yep the castle nut over there um which means there's a possibility of uh once you push put pressure on here that it's going to sort of deform a little bit and you're going to get friction um this is uh the, unfortunately, these really long bolts are sort of pricey. I want to say they're like five bucks a piece or ten bucks a piece. Um, so they're pricey for what they are, but they give you a much nicer pedal feel, um, uh, you know, because there's less friction on them. Um, not a big deal. Uh, it, you know, I, I would say this is a worthwhile upgrade. Um, and uh, you can buy that bolt on Aircraft Spruce and I believe the, that other hardware place, the General Hardware, General Aircraft Hardware, I believe is what it's called, also has them. Um, it might not hurt for us to do a uh, group buy at some point because these are not very common sizes, so they're expensive. But if, you know, like if we actually all get together and buy a hundred of them, I would guess that the price would go down pretty, pretty dramatically. You'll notice also that I already have my, uh, um, what's my call it? Uh, rudder cables in place. And <laughs> I cheated. I had seats from the RV9 that I didn't use. And uh, I just test fit them to make sure that they're good. And yep, they fit. <laughs> so that's going to save me a bunch of time there. But yeah, uh, this has been taking a little longer than I expected, mostly because I didn't have parts as I needed them. So I have to order a bunch of stuff. Uh, fittings and things like that. You'll notice I, of course, I need to order another fitting. Every time I forget something, I have to pay UPS uh, 12 bucks in shipping from Chicago. <laughs> so yeah, um, try and get all of that ahead of time. Look at the, man the, the paperwork from these guys um, and check out what you need 
Uh, you'll notice that I did make a bracket similar to that over here because the stock bracket doesn't work. Um, so I bolt, I created a bracket underneath here, a custom, you know, custom cut that I screw into the, um, what's my call the fuel valve, and that bracket is riveted onto the bottom of the regular stock bracket. Um, again, I've seen a lot of people make like fancy, you know, angle pieces and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't, I don't need that. I could just rivet a bracket to the bottom of that and, and it's good. <laughs> Save you a little bit of time. But uh, yeah, um, don't do what I did in this case and assumed I had spare parts from uh, previous builds for everything. Um, do look ahead in the plans and make sure that you have everything you need and save yourself some time and some shipping money. All right, thanks for watching. We'll talk soon.